So I was in a PhD in computer science for one year. I quit two weeks ago and so it is only fair, I don't make the rules, that now I do the typical YouTuber format video of the top X things for Y. So I'm gonna tell you the five things that I wish I knew before starting my PhD. Let's begin. First of all, I mean, this is something that I was told time and time again, and as always, I never listen and I want to try things on my own skin. It was fairly valid. It's really okay to take a break. The moment you start to think about applying for a PhD, you probably come from years, decades possibly, of studying and being a student. You can do it right away after your bachelor or you maybe even went for a master's like I did. And then you think about, oh my God, this is uh, the year prior to my graduation. I need to start applying for PhDs for next year, whatever. It's fine if at that very moment you don't know specifically what you want to do to decide instead to take a one year break in between and just go work for a company and possibly even more than for a year get the research experience in labs with you know temporary contracts uh, just do research in, in in a company like i'm doing with oracle going to work for software engineering um, i'm talking about computer science always um, and just making some money that will then serve you while you need to survive on a phd salary there's really nothing wrong with that and even though, yeah, I was definitely told about it. At the beginning, I, was, I just didn't believe that was the case for me. I was certain that, you know, yeah, I like computer science. I, I want to do research in computer systems. This PhD project that I'm being proposed seems kind of fine. What can possibly go wrong if I only take a one week break between graduating from a master's degree and starting a PhD? Well, as it turns out, first of all, you're going to burn out. I did burn out and it's very fair that that's going to happen because at the beginning of a PhD and probably throughout the whole duration, there's a lot of work and many different activities involved and the pressure to produce uh, papers and to keep publishing is very strong. I don't know if it's the same in other fields, maybe in humanities, the time span between starting a PhD and publishing a paper is longer. Uh, but in computer science, at least in the Netherlands, for example, you need four papers, published papers in possibly top tier conferences, to graduate with a PhD. So it's gonna be not an easy ride from the very beginning. You need to start producing because four papers you cannot put out with no work involved. Every paper is probably one year worth of research. And you really need to have your mind in the right place and your energy in the right place to be able to sustain that amount of work for that long. So take a break and assess if that field is really what you want to work on because then it's going to be four years, four or five years of really, really going all in and not having much time off and being willing and you need to be willing to go over time and to work over hours in order to accomplish that. So if you're not 100% certain about it, just take a break and think about it because this brings me to the second point. There's plenty of options and opportunities for you to do a PhD. I was, and probably a lot of us, are under the spotlight effect of thinking, oh my God, I was offered this one thing. Is it the chance of my life? Do I need to take it because fear of missing out, fear of missing out, fear of missing out, nothing else is going to come around if I reject this PhD offer? I really don't believe that's the case. There's a lot of demand for PhD students all around the world and you need to remember that you had the agency and the leverage to say no to a project that is not ideal for you because your competence is being demanded by so many people. There are a lot of PhD opening posi open positions, at least I'm always talking about computer science, that go unfulfilled because simply the, there's nobody to, 
to fit that profile, the research profile. If you have an expertise that you want to work with, there's probably dozens of opportunities throughout the, the, the globe, you know, that will fit you. And if some, if one of them doesn't fit you right now, if you want to take a break now and start again later, it's very fair for you to not take the first thing that comes around because there's going to be plenty of options available to you. So be proud and remember your worth and your expertise and your knowledge and be aware that really research in universities is made on the shoulders of PhD students. So you have a lot of responsibility, but also a lot of power to decide what you want to dedicate years of your brain power to. So do not go for the fear of missing out mindset and just take the first thing that comes to you because if that's not exactly what you want and probably it's not gonna be unless you're very lucky of course that can happen it's gonna be tough for you to survive the four years seeing that there were actually options that were a better fit for you and that you just are out of reach now because you're really in too deep with the one that you went with so remember you're gonna have options. A PhD is not a once in a lifetime opportunity. Maybe obtaining a PhD might be a once in a lifetime, but PhD offers, there's gonna be a plenty wherever you look and then remember that when you make your decision. Third point, this is really important to make your decision. Find a blueprint for what you want to do. What, what do I mean by that? A PhD can take many directions and it depends on what you want it to go towards, of course, because you have a lot of agency, you have a lot of independence and power to shape the direction of your research and the type of work that you want to do. But with this power of shaping it wherever, you should kind of have an idea of what you're aiming to by the time you get a PhD. So if you want to stay in academia in that field, for example, what does the CV of a professor, of your you know, ideal blueprint professor, look like? Where did they study? What kind of PhD dissertation did they do? What kind of internships did they go for? Try to learn from their success, because success leaves clues. And it's important to learn from that and try to shape your own career following the suggestions that you can pick up from other people that were there before and that can probably suggest you something. Look for PhD dissertations of other people in your field, read them, maybe from last year, from two years ago. Is it work that you are interested in reproducing? Is that the PhD dissertation that you wish to produce in four years from now? Because for example, for me, I found myself in a situation of reading PhD dissertations in the field of edge computing and just thinking to myself, Literally none of these research outputs is something that I wish I did. It's really uninteresting to me. And research does not exist in a void. If you want to fit in the edge computing research community, probably your work is not gonna be all that much different in methodology, in approach, in type of publication, because ultimately it's gonna be them who need to approve your work for publication. So it's difficult to convince them, especially people in computer science, which tend to be stubborn about different types of work. So do remember to find a blueprint. Which takes me to the fourth point. Once you know the blueprint, remember that not all PhDs are equal. Not all PhDs will get you to the same result in all the good ways and all the bad ways. So, for example, PhDs in the United States you can access only with a bachelor, but then they tend to last longer because you need to follow coursework. And then only after getting probably a master's degree in between, you can start with your research in whatever topic you choose. So the duration is likely to be six, seven years. PhDs in Europe, generally speaking, tend to have a master's degree as a prerequisite. So by the time you get there, you are kind of supposed to already have done all your coursework behind prior to that and to already have a research idea and direction in mind. This may not be the case 
for me, it's not the case yet. Like I really wish that I had more options to keep learning by following coursework. But by the time I start a PhD in the Netherlands, I'm supposed to just go for research. And that doesn't fit my learning style. And there is some wiggle room to follow courses, but primarily you're just supposed to work. And that doesn't really fit my my style, for example. I prefer to take my time to decide what I want to work on, to learn more stuff as I, as I form my opinion. And so for me personally, I believe that a PhD in the States is more fitting to my personality, my learning style and my career goals ultimately. Because I have more freedom of time, it is flexible, the duration unless the funding runs out, and you can follow courses in between. Other people I talked with really don't like the idea of having to follow more courses because they have a research idea that they just want to do, that they just want to follow through. And in that case, probably going to the States is not gonna be a nice experience to them because they they're gonna have to follow coursework and make exams and you know, it's a bit annoying if you really already have the project that you want to work on and you're just gonna go wanna go all in for that. So if you know already that you don't want to stay in academia and just want to work for a company and you need a PhD to access the research positions that you want, probably going for a three-year PhD in Italy, in UK, or in some European systems that have this shorter time span, probably is going to be easier for you to go through because you just need the title of a PhD and then you can access those types of jobs in industry. If you want to go in academia instead, you really want to shape your research vision because then you're going to need to start a lab on your own and take grants for that lab. So you might want to think more accurately about the type of research lab that you work with. It's more important to have re relevant publications if you plan to stay in academia, for example. But at the end of the day, the last lesson that is actually not relevant for people that have not yet started a PhD, or maybe it's useful to remember, but also for people that have already started and maybe are finding it hard to go on. What we see online is that there's only two possible outcomes of a PhD. You either succeed or you quit academia and decide you'll never go for a PhD ever again. Well, I, I think and I hope I would be showing you that there's a third option that is changing. I didn't like this PhD it's possible to transfer. A lot of people do it, Not nobody talks about it. Even I didn't think it was an option. Like the moment I started to realize my PhD was failing, I was under this huge pressure of thinking, oh my God, did I blow my one chance at a PhD? No. Then if, I, if you go talk to other people, you realize, oh, he actually transferred from that department to this department. This one transferred universities. That one moved to, moved to the States mid halfway through the PhD and started from scratch. It's something that people do all the time. There is not only one chance at you getting a PhD. If what you're doing is not fulfilling you, there is wiggle room to change. There's actually a lot of room to change, not only wiggle room. So remember that you have agency and you really should be investing your time in the PhD that really works for you and not in something suboptimal that is just kind of arranged in a way that kind of works but also makes you miserable. So I hope that with this knowledge you're gonna be able to make more informed decisions about the PhD that you want to do and with this in mind in the next videos since application season for the United States is in like it's going fast and we need to hurry up if we want to apply to many schools that have a deadline on December 1st. I hope to publish a few videos now to just help give directions on how to find the research group that you like, how to apply for a PhD and how to choose the right supervision and the right supervisors for you. So this is going to be the content on the next few videos and if you're interested in that you can subscribe so that you are informed about when I publish them and otherwise I hope to see you soon anyways. Thank you for watching this video and leave me comments and questions if you have any because I think I gave a lot of information right now. I hope it's not overwhelming but anyway have a great day and I will see you hopefully soon. Bye!